Isn't that video so exciting? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's really exciting to move beyond ClearBank into ClearCo. I think that you know ClearBank always meant capital for people, and in the last year, we launched four new products. Like I actually like when I think about it, I'm like, wow, I'm so proud we did that. But like <laughs> you know, we went from basically being just capital for marketing expenses, we launched full new inventory product that was totally different than everyone else's. We said, look, if you're a founder, we'll buy your inventory for you and you don't have to pay for it until it sells off your website. That was groundbreaking. It was basically like offering terms on China. Um, we got to launch, uh, you know, Runway, which was our pro our capital product for SaaS. Uh, we got to launch Angel, which was an alternative to Y Combinator. And so we could give you your first, you know, 25 to $100,000. And instead of, you know, giving up, uh, you know, 7% of your company that we don't forever, we would just take a part of your revenue for two years. And then last last year we launched valuation, which was, you know, really, I had just, it, it was always so crazy. I never knew what the companies that I were building were worth. Um, and uh, and then we got to build this tool that showed you like, look, your company's worth between 5.2 and $5.8 million. <laughs> this is what it looks like if it's valued by a private equity buyer or a VC and really shedding light into, um, into that whole space. And so, you know, the, the move from ClearBank to ClearCo was like our move beyond like we're way more than just capital. A hundred, a hundred percent. Well, as as you know, and as people watch, we 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 host founder stories, you know, every week to to tell the stories of all the amazing founders we get to work with and interact with. And I figured now is a better time than ever to have you, Michelle, uh, founder, one of the founders here of of Clearco, share a bit of the story of not so much how about ClearBank started. Everyone knows that story, but really what just happened and what we just announced on Tuesday, which is a, a, a massive milestone in, in the company, a massive milestone, I would say, for founders around the world uh, on what we're going to do next. Um, and I, I'd love if you could just, you know, not everyone gets the chance to even do this. Not everyone gets a chance to go raise a round of this size and and do this. Back in October, when this idea said like, hey, we're going to go go do this, what, what was that conversation like that led us down this path? Like, why did we decide to do it? Um, back then? Um, I think there were years where people thought they were like, that's a cute idea. First, they first they laugh at you. First, they're like, that idea is not going to work, right? You know, founders have funding. They either get it from banks with personal guarantees. And I was like, that's a pretty shitty product. Uh, or they get it from venture capitalists. And basically, they thought that the VCs had backed all the good companies and all the other companies were just not that good. But that just didn't feel right to me. Like as a founder myself, I knew that it was just so hard to get access to capital. And, you know, it was funny because we pulled the number for a series C deck, but like there are 25 million, just in e-commerce, there are 25 million e-commerce businesses. 5,000 of them got VC funded. Like you're going to tell me there's 99.9% .9 of businesses that like didn't fit. And so, you know, they, they first laugh at you and they say that this is, you know, going to be, you're, you're going to lose all your money. And then after they're done laughing, they say, well, this is going to be small. This is going to be cute. And Michelle and Andrew are going to have their cute, like little, whatever, $40 million fund and try and do their best. And so I think what's exciting is when we've been able to show that, like, this is very real. Like now that we've invested $2 billion in two years, I mean, you think about a large venture fund, they're billion dollar fund gets deployed over five or six years, like we can get to a real scale doing that. And so I think the the decision in October was like, are we ready for this next inflection point? And uh, just kind of the excitement around that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're thank you so much for everyone for the love. I'll, I'll drop these in as we go through <laughs> my thank you so much. Katie. I love that. <laughs> thank you that so much. Nice. For two to again. Um, so, you know, and this, I think I'd, I'd love to go through this question because it, it, it speaks further to like, why are we building ClearCo? Why do we exist? Um, yeah. And, and you know, one would think, okay, fundraising is hard, but you know, we got to do it on Zoom. I don't have to travel and whatnot. It sounded like the literally the most exhausting process in the world. And, <laughs> and again, for, for those who are like, yeah, I like what ClearCo is doing, but like, you know, what's, what's wrong with equity fundraising? What's wrong with that? Why is that so hard? Tell us, tell me a bit about like, Give me an example of a day. Pick like the hardest day of oh that journey. God. What what was morning to night? What did that day look like? I mean, okay. 
So you open up your phone when you wake up and you start with three rejection emails. That's how your day starts. Because when you pitch, you pitch 80 people and or 100 people and 80 of them say no to you. And they're really smart people. And they're telling you no for all sorts of reasons that you know about your business. So you just, that's the foot you start off on is failure. And then you go and you're pitching people and an external circumstance is happening that you don't know anything about. Like one of the first weeks we were pitching people um, is we started pitching as GameStop was crashing. And people are like, oh yeah, GameStop, they deserve to crash and like good, all, all that's true. Except yeah. that the hedge funds that are largely <laughs> investing in Series C companies were getting caught into this GameStop fiasco. And so, you know, we were getting people on the phone that you could tell hadn't slept in 48 hours. And they were like, I think I might've just lost like uh, billions of dollars. Like I can't, I can't think of a deal right now. Um, and then you do a pitch, you like eat for half an hour and 30 minutes. You do or like half an hour after you do a quick debrief with the team and you go again and we would do five pitches a day. And then in between that, you're getting diligence emails and diligence calls. You're having to like back channel. You have to do your own research, figuring out what investors are good, what investors are not good. And so this whole process, I mean, look, I, I totally get why it exists. It's a long-term relationship. If we could have had ClearCo for ClearCo, like if we could have used our own product, we would have definitely done it. But it is it is a big and exhausting process. And that was just me. That, that a, another third of the company was pulled in to making sure these investors understood every other level of diligence, statistic, how we measure things, IPO readiness, all of that stuff. And I think one one thing to touch on too, it it is not it's not like any other pitch. I think the part that I really appreciate that you shared with with us, it's how on you had to be on. It's like it sounded like a high performance athlete. You're playing the game of your life. What what would you what would you do like before you opened up that Zoom link? Like how would you psych yourself up to make sure that you were in the zone to tell the same story Man, over and over I, again? I jumping jacks, like you just. <laughs> You, you try and get your water, your bathroom break in, and you're like running and you're hoping that you're on time, but you, you, and you really have to get yourself excited about telling the same story. Cause you are going to now say the same words to a hundred people. Like you are so <laughs> bored of your own stories and your own silly jokes, but you have to make it sound like this is the first time you're saying and you are equally as excited about it because that is what people want to hear. They want to hear an incredible story and they want to hear um, how you grew. So mm -hmm. what was the other, you had another part of that question that was interesting. Yeah, well, it was more of like, I was really like, can you describe a typical fundraising day? Um, yeah. that, that's really, you know, I think you kind of touched on some of those yeah. things. Yeah. Um, you had another question after that. Yeah, I mean, it's really kind of when it's all said and done is when you actually saw the money hit the bank account, right? <laughs> what what did that feel like? Um. It felt like we got to base camp. It felt like um, I put it on my list, you know, five years ago that I I really wanted to see if I could build a unicorn. I really wanted to see if I could build something that was um, that had that had really reasonable scale. But I also knew that like this was just starting. Like this mm -hmm. this was not like it's a milestone, but it's not. Um, it's a milestone, but it's not everything. Um, so it, it it now just means we have a we have a bigger hill to climb, right? And really, the hard part is not getting to base camp. It's actually getting to Everest. <laughs> it's getting to the top. I, so we've been using that analogy. It's like we filled the plane up with fuel, and and look, we're big fans of that. I think that it's it's good to celebrate kind of what this what this means. Um, but you know, we still think of things as like day one. Like we're just we're just starting building, and and we don't believe that. Um, that we are invincible in any way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, I, Carmen, I promised her I'd keep you on time. So um, I've, I have one, I'll take one audience question. Yeah. I think that's relevant to this. Um, I think it was Glantine. Uh, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but I think this is relevant to what you're talking about. Every morning you wake up and you check your phone, you're like, well, that's five more no's on the top of the 20 I got last week. How did yeah. you, you know, what was the next thing you did? You read your emails and you're like, okay, well, how do you start your day to make sure that doesn't bother you and doesn't psych you out? Um, how do you push past this failure feeling? Uh, you just, you actually prepare yourself for that nose. You say like, look, you know, I'm going to start this process. A lot of people are going to say a lot of really intense things about 
the business that Andrew and I have built and they're not going to be nice and they're going to be cruel. And I'm expecting that. And when you expect it, it's so much less painful when it happens. And you're just got to be like, look, it's like, I don't know. It would be like, Dan, you're super fit. It's like going for a hard workout and expecting it not to be painful. Like, you know, it's going to be painful yeah. and you're like, you have to lean in you have to expect that like, yeah, you're going to damage some muscles. And then it's by tearing them that you make them stronger. The other thing, um, that I do is I just surround myself by a really good group of people. I have a lot of incredible supporters that are not, um, they're not yes people in my life, people that have been around for a long time. They can be very real uh, with what I'm good at, uh, but it can also call me on my bullshit. And I think that it's, it's important to remember because when you get to some of these other stages, a lot of people are selling you a lot of different things. And, you know, my parents and my siblings and my, my business partners and my closest friends, um, you know, can remind me what, um, what really matters. It's amazing. Well, really, uh, I think the last thing I'd love to finish off on is um, first to thank you on behalf of the team uh, for for going through this journey. But I think really more importantly, as as an entrepreneur to thank you on behalf of founders from around the world for the founders we haven't even got a chance to to speak to yet because yeah. all that hard work, not just the fundraise, but all the hard work for the entire team over the past many years is really in service of, of everyone watching that's trying to start a business or started a business. We want to be here to help and support you. So thank you on behalf of, of everyone for, for everything that you've done. Um, and if you could distill, what are you most excited about? Whatever you can talk about publicly, we have lots of cool stuff coming, but if what, what are you most excited about next? The minute you know you get off of this next week, what yeah, are you excited to I mean, Look, I'm excited to grow internationally. Uh, I've never had the opportunity to do this, but we've believed and we've seen that from what we've done so far, that there's a huge need for this product uh, in many other uh, international markets, which I know you're a huge part of making possible. We wanna build a lot more with, with partners uh, this year, and we want to build new products that founders have never seen before that can hopefully make their lives easier. Because I genuinely believe that no one becomes a founder because you're like, I can't wait to fundraise, or I can't wait to deal with my bank account or my accounting or optimizing my ad spend. But we can make that a lot easier uh, for you with data. And so, if we can, if we can do that, we think we can create a few more founders in the world, which is ultimately my end goal. Amazing, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for tuning in on our special edition of this Founders Live, and uh, just. Watch out for what's next from from Clearco. Thank you all, Michelle. I'll see you later. Thank you. Great day. Bye.